Did you know that the world's first author that is known by name was a woman who lived over 4,000 years ago? Stick around to find out who she is in honour of World Poetry Day. Hello and welcome to World History Encyclopedia. My name is Kelly and in honour of World Poetry Day on March 21st, we're going to have a look at three prominent female poets from the ancient world. Enhudana, the High Priestess of Inanna, Sappho of Lesbos, and the Chinese poet Cho Wen Jun. The easiest way to support us is by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel so you don't miss out on any new uploads. If you like this t-shirt, you can find this design and heaps more in our shop, which I will link down below. World Poetry Day is held every year on the 21st of March to celebrate one of humanity's most treasured forms of cultural and linguistic expression and identity. Poetry is an art form which has been practiced throughout history and by many, many cultures. It's a way to share universal human emotion, it transcends time and space, and no matter how long ago it may have been composed, it can still be appreciated in the modern day. Let's start with the world's first known author, Enhudwana. Enhudwana was an Akkadian poet who lived in Mesopotamia between 2285 and 2250 BCE. She was the daughter of King Sargon the Great and is the first author in the world that's known by name. Enhudwana was placed in a position of high authority by Sargon as the high priestess of the goddess Inanna at the most important temple in Ur, which was a city in Sumer. And Hudwana wrote poems, prayers, and psalms, which have helped modern audiences understand not only the nature of Mesopotamian gods at the time, but the people's perceptions of the divine. To sum up, she was pretty awesome. She is best known for her three powerful hymns, The Great-Hearted Mistress, The Exaltation of Inanna, and Goddess of the Fearsome Powers but she also composed 42 poems which reflect her own personal responses to war, her religious devotion, and her hopes and frustrations. And Hedwana documented through her poetry the names of major Mesopotamian deities that were worshipped and synthesized the Sumerian and Akkadian beliefs, transforming local deities into gods for all, not just the Sumerians and the Akkadians. In her time, Enhudwana witnessed a great deal of turmoil and was even driven from her position and home at Ur by an armed insurrection. Her poem, Lament on War, displays her talent for striking images and dynamic meter to drive home her message. The poem, translated here by Michael R. Birch, begins with the lines, You hack down everything you see, war god. Rising on fearsome wings, you rush to destroy our land. Raging like thunderstorms, howling like hurricanes, screaming like tempests, thundering, raging, ranting, drumming, whiplashing whirlwinds. Men falter at your approaching footsteps. Tortured dirges scream on your lyre of despair. Moving 1700 years later and to the island of Lesbos, we have the Greek poet Sappho, who lived from 620 to 570 BCE. Of the nine volumes of poetry composed by her, only one full poem survives, and the rest are fragments. Due to many of them being concerned with female homosexuality, the words sapphic and lesbian both derive from Sappho of Lesbos. She invented her own meter for poetry called the sapphic meter or sapphic stanza, which consists of three lines of 11 beats and a concluding line of five. She wrote poems that are so intimate and honest that even in fragments, her understanding of enduring human emotion still resonates with readers in the modern day. If you want to learn more about Sappho of Lesbos, hit the link here to watch our video on her life and legacy. One of the most famous lines is often interpreted as referencing immortality through art, how an artist lives on through her work, but as universal appeal in expressing the human need to be remembered. Someone will remember us, I say, even in another time. These lines prove true, as she is still a famous poet in the present day, 2000 years after she wrote.
Then some 400 years later, in China, during the Western Han Dynasty, we come to the poet Cho Wenjun. Cho Wenjun was born in 175 BCE into a wealthy family, but at 16 she was married off to an ailing man, who died a few years later. She returned into her family's care, and it was at this time she met her true love. Sima Siangru was at her family home playing the Ku Qin, which is a type of lyre. And upon hearing the music, Cho laid eyes upon Sima, and they fell in love and eloped, much to the disappointment of Cho's family. Sima's poetry became very popular, potentially because Cho was his inspiration, whom he called his true love. When Sima started to value money over their relationship, Cho wrote one of her most famous poems, To a Faithless Husband, which is also translated as Blaming Husband Poem, Song of the White Hair, and White Hair Lament. The different translations all have the same core message of the fragility of love, the preference for new over old, and money over true love. Our love was pure as the snow on the mountains, white as a moon between the clouds. They're telling me your thoughts are double, that's why I've come to break it off. Today we'll drink a cup of wine, tomorrow we'll part beside the canal, walking about beside the canal where its branches divide east and west. Alas and alas and again alas, so must a girl cry when she's married, if she find not a man of single heart, who will not leave her till her hair is white. Cho's poetry, like Sappho's fragments and Enheduanna's works, still resonates with readers today because of their timeless themes and the skill of these poets in touching others with their words. Do you have a favourite poet or a piece of poetry? Let us know who it is or what piece it is down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any new uploads. This video was brought to you by World History Encyclopedia. For more great articles and interactive content, head to our website via the link below. World History Encyclopedia is a non-profit organisation. If you'd like to support our work, hit the link in the top corner of the screen or follow the support link down below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon with another video.